Hey everyone, Psychrayasin here, and I was wondering, if I was just starting out art right now, um, so maybe this would be equivalent to me 15 years ago, uh, and I knew nothing, and I wanted to give myself um, some knowledge of what tools to get, uh, what books should you buy, and all that in order to get to my current level as quickly as possible. What would that be? Uh, how much would it cost and everything like that? So this is going to be specifically something I would tell myself. And so we all have different goals. So you, it might help you, it might not. Um, but I'm hoping it does a little bit anyway. And yeah, so let's let's go through it. So the first thing I would tell myself is to pick up this book. Uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And this is the best book for someone who doesn't think they could draw or, you know, they're really, they don't have any experience and it will build your confidence. It will get rid of this idea of talent and, or at least it will fight it quite a bit. And it will help you to learn how to draw things that look like what they're supposed to, you know, it's, it's, I, I think it, it was really effective for me uh, starting out. So that's where I'd start. Next thing is this video. It's one of my own videos. Oh, and uh, the price of this is 15 to $20 Canadian. Now I'm going to quote Canadian prices because that's, again, that's the prices I, I know and I have. It's pretty close to the US price. So um, if you're in Europe or Asia or South America or Africa or anywhere else, um, of course, your prices will vary, but I just wanted to give uh, the price that I know of. So, so yeah, that's fifteen to twenty dollars. This, however, is free. Um, now, I just wish I had this knowledge before because I did not know how to practice. I did not know how much work I need to put in or how to go about doing things. And I would watch a lot of tutorials but not know how to implement them. So this fixes that. Now all the all the links to everything are going to be in the description. Um, most of the stuff I got off Amazon, and if I didn't, I will include a link to where to uh, find the stuff. Okay, next is Marshall Vandruff's perspective video series. I've seen so many different perspective video series. Um, Scott Robertson has really good ones, but um, this one is probably my favorite, and it's only $12, which is crazy for how much information you get and it's really I found it was the best one um, now full disclosure I watched this on uh, GOM player which allows you to speed up the rate of playback and I have it at about 1.7 times speed so Marshall talks a bit faster and I, I like doing this for certain videos especially that you know like when I watch something by a guy like Glenn Vilpu who talks a bit slowly um, I find if I watch it at actual speed, I kind of doze off a bit. It's hard to pay attention, but when I speed it up, it works really well. And I think VLC player, you can do the same thing. And I'm sure other other video players, you can actually increase the speed. So the one I use was uh, GOM player. And again, that's $12. Okay, now for anatomy, this is the book I would recommend. Again, I've seen so many different kinds of anatomy books. So many are really good but because I'm giving, you know, my greatest hits, sort of, this one is the one I would tell myself to pick up. This is 15 to $20. It's the Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist by Stephen Rogers Peck. Next, how to draw foreshortening with the coil technique. Another free video on this channel. And the coil technique is, would be really helpful for me, but also learning about arcs, I think, would be super helpful. Now, everything I've covered so far can be done traditionally. And these are the tools I like to use. I'm not saying they're the best, I'm just saying I really like to use them. Uh, the Canson sketchbook, it's, it's a good sketchbook. You can erase a lot and it won't really damage the paper. Um, it's good on with pencil, uh, pen, everything seems to work nice. I like to use uh, oh, and that runs you about eight to thirteen dollars. But I've had times where I've seen it on sale for like two dollars, and I just buy a bunch. Um, uh, the pencil now, it's a Pilot Super Grip uh, pencil. It's zero point five, and I 
use uh, 2B lead in that. So I don't use just the HB. Um, I, I, I prefer 2B and uh, that that depends because it's hard. I don't know if it's easy to find now. Uh, so I did search it up and I found prices from 10 to $35, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty pricey. So I'm sure you could find uh, an equivalent thing. You know, you don't have to be too specific. I just, that's, that's the one I use. And then I like uh, the uh, Super High Polymer Eraser by Pentel. Um, uh, Stadler makes some really nice erasers as well, but this one, for me, it's expensive. It runs about $4, but I'm sure uh, if you're in Asia, you could probably find it for much cheaper. Okay, here's the scanner I like to use. It's uh, it's an A3 scanner, so I believe it'll fit 11 by 17 paper comfortably. And this is a workhorse. I just, it costs quite a bit. It, it's $300, or at least it was for me. Uh, $300, but I use it regularly, and because I mentioned that everything so far has been uh, traditional, um, you know, that's how I scan my stuff in. So, something I recommend, especially if you scan larger things, so for my sketchbook, uh, it fits in the scanner, no problem. Now, I've recommended these books before, um, and I have to recommend them again because this is for myself if I was starting out and I look at these books every day really pretty much every day I look through them uh, as a source of inspiration but also just learning how to draw things I just look through and it's not a how-to book but I find it more useful than pretty much any other books I I've read on art uh, so yeah, Kim jong Gi's sketch collection. Now, these are pricey. Uh, it, it would run me, including shipping, uh, from $305 to $360. So, um, but for me, it's worth it. Now, we're moving into digital because I do uh, work digitally. And so, on the left side, I have a Wacom Intuos Medium. Uh, in the middle, it's a Cintiq 22 HD, which is what I'm currently using. And then on the right, we have the Cintiq Companion. That's the 13 inch uh, Cintiq Companion. So the Intuos Medium, and I, I used an Intuos Large for, for a while, but I think the Medium is fine. But this is basically, what you should buy depends on your budget. And so the Intuos Medium is $300 roughly. The 22HD is around 2000 I picked mine up for 1800 because it was on like a sale, $200 off, but it's going to be around that much. And the Cintiq Companion runs you from 2600 to $3,100, uh, depending on what model you buy. Um, I believe there's like more RAM or bigger, I don't know, bigger hard drive or what, but uh, there's, there's a different model. And so... I guess anywhere from three hundred to three thousand dollars is what you would expect to buy uh, or be spending. Next is Photoshop. Now Photoshop has changed since I got it to being on the cloud, so now it's subscription based and it's ten dollars a month. Of course, there are other programs out there. Manga Studio, uh, Krita is free and it's nice, but because um, I'm just giving. Uh, the bare essentials or maybe the greatest hits I would have to say you know out of all the programs probably I'd pick Photoshop and then uh, this video for free that I made called the value game now learning values was really difficult for me I spent a good month maybe 12 hours a day just studying values in charcoal and after that I just spent years trying to trying to get my values better but um, I was teaching students and I made this game up and the students started improving really quick much faster than I did and I can really see the benefits of like I wish I had <laughs> known about this or um, no one else made I'm, I've never heard of anyone else recommending a game like this so I think it was very useful so you might want to check out that video uh, and that really helped me learn about values. Now to use Photoshop, this is really where I would go. Uh, it's the ultimate guide to Photoshop. Now it's on Pencil Kings and it's not for free. It's $10, but it's $10 a month 
uh, it's a subscription service so you can pay for as much or as little as you want you could just pay for ten dollars and then watch the whole video series but you get access to the whole site but specifically I would tell myself look at this video series because what I did when I created it is I took all my years of using Photoshop and everything I learned and I tried to teach it to someone who has never used Photoshop like literally just a complete Photoshop virgin and the image you see with the the fruit the apple and the pears um, that is the end result of the tutorial so you go from knowing nothing you don't even know how to click file save and then you can at the end uh, get results like that so for ten dollars it's ridiculously a good deal okay next is a playlist I did and sorry for tooting my own horn but I mean all my videos pretty much I've created them for a younger me for me that I wish I knew this and because I cannot benefit from it anymore um, I try and teach other people so at least it's it would be helpful so yeah I would go through the foundations of light and shadow series because you learn a lot about how light works or at least um, how it works for an artist. Next thing, this is very specific to me, I think, but I learned so much from the course The Art of Caricature with Jason Seiler. Now, depending on uh, what you buy, whether it's the self-taught classes or the, the ones with video feedback, it's going to run you quite uh, I mean, okay, so the self-taught is, a for me, it's $470, and then the full version where you get uh, a video critique is $998. So again, it's not cheap, but I learned a lot. Um, but you'll notice that this is after quite a bit of stuff, so I think you should have a good knowledge of Photoshop before you go into this course, and you should be able to see value. So the value game, you know, do that a lot until you're very good at it. Um, before starting this course, also drawing on the right side of the brain. So I'm really doing this in order for, you know, what step to take and then what's the next step. So this is something I would recommend uh, to myself. Next one is how to choose colors that work. Again, it's another Psychra video, so it's absolutely free. Um, but this would have helped me a lot, I think, to find a color method. Now, the next few are just going to be dependent on where you want to go so if you wanted and I did go down the traditional route to learn oil painting and when I did it I used the first book and this is the second one but it's Alla Prima by Richard Schmidt uh, everything I know about painting and this one is everything I know about painting and more because it's Alla Prima 2 so it's it's just the same as Alla Prima 1 but with more stuff so uh, anyone who's interested in traditional uh, oil painting definitely pick this up and if you are not it still could be helpful it's a nice read I found it very enjoyable um, now if you want to get into manga this might seem weird but this helped me the most the the Bakuman um, manga because I don't know it's it's like it's not a necessarily a how to draw manga book but I found it much more useful than any how to draw manga book because first of all the illustrations that are created are by a top manga artist it's a guy who did death note and i really liked uh, the art style of death note so i don't know it's different when it's coming from a guy who's totally done it as opposed to some of the other how to draw manga books which you look through them and it's like they're okay but they're not nearly as good as as death note right so um, yeah, this helped me a lot. And then finally, I would recommend uh, Framed Ink. Um, it is an excellent book on composition. Um, but the last three, uh, Framed Ink, Bakuman, and Alla Prima, I wouldn't say they're absolutely essential. Uh, it's just, you know, it's up to you. If you want to get them, I would consider them a good investment. So uh, I forgot to talk about the prices. Um, a la prima runs you 85 to 125 dollars depending on whether you get the soft cover or hard cover uh, bakuman the complete set was a hundred dollars to 160 it depends if you can find it on sale 
Um, and then framed ink was 17 to $30 again, depending on if you could find it on sale. Now, the whole thing in total, uh, if you got the low end of all the prices I mentioned, and for instance, you got the Intuos Medium, you're, it's going to run you $1,700. Now, compare that to art schools, um, which are the one I went to, I got a scholarship and it was still $18,000. So, uh, so that's over 10 times as much as if I just got all these books and everything. And I think it would have benefited me a lot more. Now on the high end, if you got the Cintiq Companion and, and you paid a lot for everything, it's going to run you $5,200. So anywhere between, uh, Canadian $1,700 and $5,200 is what you're expecting to pay, but even at the high end, even paying $5,200, I'm saving tons compared to an art school, because um, they run, you know, at the low end here anyway, it's like 4000 a year, um, and then you can easily get to 40000 and then the really good art schools are uh, 80,000 a year. So, um, four years at 80,000 or, or four years at maybe it's not 80,000 a year, but it's like 40,000 a year, I think. Anyway, it's really, ex it's really expensive. So, um, this is what I would have recommended to myself. Uh, probably I wouldn't have gone completely to get the 1700 cause I probably would have got the Cintiq HD so maybe I'd be spending around 4000 but that's that's roughly uh, what I would tell myself and how much I could expect to pay. And then as for time, um, maybe it would take two years, you know, two years with that much. So anyway, I hope that helps and it gives some direction to someone who's just getting started. Again, these are just my recommendations, my picks for what I would have done uh, if I had to do it all again. So yeah.